Hello, my name is Count Wovenstein and I am going to do a video demonstrating how to use a freezer cartridge to bypass coffee lock protection or its equivalent on a Commodore 64. Um, I uh, made an earlier video doing exactly the same thing called cracking a Commodore 64 game and I never realised um, how much controversy this title would actually cause. I had a lot of people um, turning up on my channel to um, point out that um, my use of the word cracking was inappropriate. In fact, I even had a comment left by Pontus Berg, who is otherwise known as Bacchus from Fairlight. And certainly far be it from me to argue with a Fairlight alumni about the definition of what cracking is. I had always understood cracking to be the bypassing of the copy lock protection but uh, Bacchus uh, left a comment explaining that you can't legitimately refer to what you're doing as cracking unless you have provided a trainer, a crack draw and a loader. Now, um, in fairness, what I'm doing here would only be a first step. If you wanted a nice uh, multi-loader game on a disc, you would definitely have to replace the tape loader. Um, what I'm doing uh, was actually called single filing, and that is when you have the tape loader load game code into memory, then you um, would use a freezer cartridge um, and get the entry point for the game code which the freezer cartridge will provide and then you dump the contents of the memory from the entry point on onto a disk as a single file which can then be loaded in in the normal way. Now um, if you were doing this with a multi-level game you would certainly have problems that's absolutely true because um, when you finish the level it would look for the next um, level to load in from the tape so the uh, tape loader would have to be replaced um, I have never claimed I was any kind of coding genius um, when I was loosely involved with this stuff as a youth um, I was uh, not replacing tape loaders. Um, my part in it was um, not um, so much to do with coding whatsoever. Um, I am quite good at making tracker modules and um, I am a musician so was more interested in that side of things but I did watch what was going on and I did pick up one or two things along the way but I am certainly not in any way shape or form pretending that um, I was ever going to be headhunted by Fear White or Quartex or Slipstream or anyone of that sort um, my friend and I 
did um, do some uh, piracy on a local level until such time as the police found out about it and then all his equipment was confiscated. Anyway, to do this I need to attach a cartridge. Uh, there we go, attach cartridge image. And uh, I need to figure out my own filing system, ROMs possibly. Action replay 4.2. Motion replay 7. Um, I think it might have been the 4.2 one that I actually used. Um, the or was it the Oh, that's, yeah, that's the one, that's, um, that looks very familiar. So, need to do a normal reset. I need to attach a blank disk to drive it. Um, if I could figure out where I... May have put that. Hmm. Is there an all fails? Uh, um. Why the hell? Where, where, where? Oh, there. Boink. So, uh, I also need to attach a cassette image. Uh, Oh, there's a cassette, but I'm in the movie. Right. Now, let's see about uh, loading this in. I should have a simulated tape here. There we go, play. Is it going to find anything? There it has. There we go, Batman. Actually, quite wide the water in this because it has um, Ocean Water 4, which happens to be my uh, one of my favourite Commodore 64. Music tracks. Also, really loved the uh, Last Ninja 2 soundtrack, especially the Central Park music. This was also um, a film that I thought was really cool, but you get the end of the I think it was 89 or 90 that came out. And there we go. Ocean Water 4 by John Dunn, if I remember rightly.
that actually does work somewhat like a youngish Michael Keaton there. And uh, Jack Nicholson who did a bravura performance as a Joker. and what I've said about my friend getting his computers confiscated. Um, the reason he did and I didn't was because he kept my name out of it because he um, was concerned that I would crack under police questioning and police might find out about several other dubious sidelines that he was involved in. Um, as he sadly passed away about 15 years ago, um, I could speak openly about this and I'm certainly not going to bring any more trouble to him. I always felt it was a Robin Hood thing, um, and uh, I was more interested in two fingers up to the authorities than making money out of it. But to be fair, any money he did make, um, he didn't just stick it in his pocket. When we had coffee parties, he um, reinvested the money back into um, getting more games and uh, utilities for playing around with them. Right, this should be just about loaded. Thank you for the call, right away, it was in at about 97 in the tape counter. The lines, I think, um, the, the wavy lines around the borders, I think that came from Clive Sinclair, the, in the ZS80, the, um, the tape loader and the graphics chip, I think the... Well, I didn't even have a dedicated graphics chip, but the tape loader and the video output were, um... No, running through the same chip connections, so... When you loaded the tape, it made these wavy lines in the screen, and they became a thing. The Spectrum had them, and Commodores had them. Anyway, to the business of freezing this. So, here you've got your machine code monitor, uh, directory, parameters, view sprite, sprite color, poke finder, and that would, um, I would think before people who wanted infinite lives and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, as you can see here, it wasn't just for uh, freezing and single filing code, it was um, it also functioned as a wrapper, a screen editor. The, Edit screen that maybe if you um, wanted to make some simple crack draw, uh, but I do not want to get into trying to remember all that shit after 35 years. So the monitor, this had your 
disassembler um, LDA load accumulator, store accumulator um, so uh, you would jump commands um, so one of these jump commands in the loader would uh, jump you into the game code anyway getting out of here uh, I need to would it be in here? Nope. Shade, that is not what I wanted to do. Oh, that's what it is what I wanted to do. Um, so we've got a disk in device 8. So let's give that a format. Call it Batman. Um, single failed. Um, I'm not sure, I can't even remember how long a file name you were allowed in a Commodore 64 and um, in old PCs I think you get 8 characters plus your 3 wildcard ones but it doesn't seem to have any issue with that so let's try it Okay, so that looks reasonably good. No disk save. So let's just try a standard disk save and call it Batman the movie. Okay, no, oh, there we go. Right, so that's the limit of the number of characters in my world, so let's just call him Batman. So, in actual fact, um, a lot of Commodore 64 cracks came from uh, people um, using tapes, games that were released in tapes and um, you, know, you would then replace the tape loader and um, it would uh, I mean you don't have to worry about copyright protection because copyright protection didn't work on tapes. However, tapes were only popular in Europe in the 64. Um, most people in the USA, from what I've read, were using uh, disk drives. But uh, the methodology with the freezer cartridge uh, would be the same. Because once it's single filed from the memory, as we're doing here, regardless of whether it came from a tape or from a disc, the copy lock protection would be gone. So the issue um, with my last video was... Um, my use of the word cracking um, this kind of thing would very much just be a first stage and it's a very layman's kind of version of it um, someone like our friend Bacchus from Fairlight would uh, do something much more impressive, I have absolutely no doubt. Um, 
Did have a program for the Amiga for um, creating Crackrosan. It um, it took uh, text and would make it side scroll. It was called Rainbow Writer, I think. Um, something like that. It was made by Skull of Rainbow Trio. Um, and you could generate the side scrolling text. It made a nice star field and it um, could load in images and uh, tracker mods so you could get music then it would crunch them all into file for you so again if I was using that which I still do I still use it to make music videos with side scrolling text but when I use that I am not doing you anything particularly clever uh, I am using a system that someone else invented that takes all the coding and no labor intensive bit out of it for you. Um, and I'll admit that with the shame because coding was never my thing. This is all about nostalgia, it's not about me pretending to be clever, so please, if you uh, happen to be from Paranoia, Slipstream Cortex or whatever and um, you happen to watch this um, you absolutely don't need to come out of retirement to have a go at me um, I'm not pretending to have done anything I didn't or be anything I wasn't and uh, respect to all the people who could do this stuff properly no, anyway, that should be, uh, no, actually, I've got an option to save a loader. Uh, I'm not going to try that just now, I merely want to, um, reload the, We get over here by exit to utilities, exit to first one. To, whoops, what I really want is to get a normal reset out of this. Um, I'm sure there was an option. I'm sure there was an option to get a normal uh, reset here. This is unfortunate because this went a lot more fucking smoothly last time. I do not see how I get out of this and back to... Alright, okay, do it this way. Oh, there we go. Yes, I knew it could be done. Right, so if I load the first file on the blank disk that I just dumped to it, with a bit of luck, It's actually bloody hard to tell whether this is crashed and or whether it's actually doing something. Hmm. 
Well, there's still numbers moving, so hopefully. Right. The time I did this in the other video, which I've now taken down, was the first time I'd done it in years. And this is the second time I've done it in years. So, there is a very good chance that this could fuck up. That said, it does appear to be loading something. These numbers seem to be falling, so hopefully this is a countdown and when it reaches zero. Oh, -ho! right. So there's your entry point. Sys2061 will make it to, um, if I recall rightly, jump it to a memory location. Hopefully, our entry point, and there it is. So that is the first level of Batman the movie, single filled. Um, there would still be a lot of work to do, replacing the tape loader, and you would have to single fill each level. Anyway, that is nearly half an hour, so I think I've talked about this for long enough. Um, hopefully, the way I've um, worded things in this video, uh, people who watch it will find a bit less upsetting. It certainly it was not my intention to rail anyone up. And uh, a 50 year old man now, halfway retired from all this shit. And uh, the last thing I want is to get back into teenage pissing contests over it. So, anyway, we'll call it a day there. And upload this and see what happens.